بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم إن الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله وبعد فإن أشتك الحديث كتاب الله وقير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وإياكم ومحدثات الأمور فإن كل محدثة بدعة وكل بدعة ضلالة وكل ضلالة في النار Brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. The topic which I have chosen after a lot of contemplation is A'adam Hub, the greatest love. A magical word, but no time. So I was, wallahi, thinking to totally cancel my lecture. But uh, we do have a few minutes, and uh, I'm not going to talk almost nothing about this, apart from very few things. Alhamdulillah, Allah Alhamdulillah, all praise due to Allah the most magnificent, the most merciful, the unforgiving, the one who has given us so much. And when we stand to talk here, normally for whatever topics we choose, the experts in the field, they come. So when you talk about football, a footballer would come. About soccer, a person who knows soccer would come to talk. When you talk about medical aspects, then somebody who is a doctor would be coming to talk. So when we are talking about love, is it about Romeo and Juliet? Is it about Qais wa Layla? Is it about Antar wa Abla? Or is it about Jamil wa Sunayya? Definitely not. Definitely not about Romeo and Juliet. Because I'm not in that field, so I won't be able to give that any justice if I do even choose to talk about. So what am I going to talk about? I'm going to talk about what is known as the greatest love. And what is that? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, قُلْ إِن كُنْتُمْ تُحِبُّونَ اللَّهِ فَاتَّبِعُونِي فَاتَّبِعُونِي يُحْبِكُمُ اللَّهِ وَيَغْفِرْ لَكُمْ ذُنُوبَكُمْ وَاللَّهُ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ Say, if you love Allah, Follow me. That is who Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, And he will love you. Who? Allah. And forgive you your wrong actions. Allah, the one we love. Allah, the one who created us. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the one who blessed us with this iman. This actual lecture, which inshallah, bi'idhnillah, I would try to divide between today and in near future. I had constructed it under six topics. The first one, Al-Adilla ala hubbillah, or evidences mandating loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Next to that was, Maratibul muhabba wa a'dham al hub Various stages of love, and the greatest love. Thirdly, Al-Ibra bi hubbillahi la. What is important is that Allah loves you. We all claim that we love Allah, but, is it really that Allah loves you? Is the most important. <coughs> Fourthly, alamatu muhabbatillah. Signs of loving Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So in this number four, I will be giving so many signs through which you will be able to verify whether are you loving Allah? Fifthly, namazich mun muhabbatillah. Namazich, I will be giving examples of loving Allah. Examples from the prophets, examples from the sahabas, examples later from those who gave their life and everything they had for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And in the end, 10 beautiful things or points which would bring you the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is basically what I'm going to talk about, but definitely only one or two points for the day, keeping the time factor in my mind. First 
for Muhammad Allah? The love of Allah. Is it a choice? Is it sunnah? Is it mustahab? Or is it more than that? It is wajib, obligatory, mandated on you. You cannot be a Muslim without that. You cannot be a Muslim without loving Allah, without loving Rasulullah, and without loving Alladina Amanu Billah. If you don't love Allah, if you don't love Rasulullah, if you don't love those who follow Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you cannot be a perfect mu'min, and at times you cannot be a mu'min at all. Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, He says, وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبًّا لِلَّهِ and those who believe, those who believe in Allah, they love Allah more. Yes, Kufar, Mushrikeen, Yahud, Nasara, they love whoever they think is their Lord, is their creator or their God. But we as Muslims, we do love Allah. Our love for Allah is pristine. Is something which has got no other resemblance to it at all. No equal to it. وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا أَشَدُّ حُبَّ لِلَّهِ Allah says, قُلْ إِنْ كَانَ آبَاؤُكُمْ وَأَبْنَاؤُكُمْ وَإِخْوَانُكُمْ وَأَسْوَاجُكُمْ وَعَشِيرَتُكُمْ وَأَمْوَالٌ اِقْتَرَفْتُمُوهَا وَتِجَارَةٌ تَخْشَوْنَ كَسَادَهَا وَمَسَاكِنَا تَرْضَوْنَهَا أَحْبَ إِلَيْكُمْ مِنَ اللَّهِ وَرَسُولِهِ وَجِهَادٌ فِي سَبِيلِهِ فَتَرَبَّسُوا حَتَّى يَأْتِيَ اللَّهُ بِأَمْرِهِ وَاللَّهُ لَا يَهْدِي الْقَوْمَ الْفَاسِقِينَ It's a challenge from Allah. Which means it's mandated on you to love Allah. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, if your fathers, your sons, your brothers, your wives, your relatives, well, which you have obtained, comments, wherein you fear decline and dwellings with which you are pleased are more beloved to you than Allah and His Messenger and Jihad in the course of Allah. Then wait until Allah executes His command and Allah does not guide the differently disobedient people. Wallahu la yahdil qawm al fasiqin. And Allah says, وَمِنَ النَّاسِ مَنْ يَتَّخِذُ مِنْ دُونِ اللَّهِ أَنْدَادًا يُحِبُّونَهُمْ كَحُبِّ اللَّهِ وَالَّذِينَ آمُنَا شَدُّ حُبِّ لِلَّهِ This I had already explained that those who, who, who have taken partners with Allah, they love them as equal to Allah, but the love of a Muslim is far superior. We are ready to give our life any time for Allah. Ayy Allah, Wallahi, أَنَا أُشْهِدُكَ يَا Allah, that we are I can't say for others, but for myself, I am ready anytime, bi idhnillah ta'ala. And I'm pretty sure most of you would be agreeing with that. Anytime, for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahumma ja'ana minas sadiqin fiha. Ameen. So, no wonder, you know Abu Sufyan, he later on became a Muslim, but most of the life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he was not. In the last three years, he is a Sahabi, a great Sahabi, uncle to him sallallahu alaihi wasallam but he was amongst the enemies of islam and muslims you know when he saw the sahabas in the way they were towards him sallallahu alaihi wasallam he said by allah i have never seen anybody who loves unconditionally somebody they follow in pure and love the way i have seen ashabi kama raitu ashaba muhammad muhammad the way I have seen the companions of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa Muhammad ibn Abdullah sallallahu alayhi wa Ay wallah. So they are the ones whom we are talking about. Walhamdulillah. Now, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, Thalathun man kunna fihi wajada halawatul iman. An yakun Allah wa rasulahu ahabba ilayh mimma siwahuma. وأن يحب المرء لا يحب إلا الله وأن يكره أن يعود في الكفر كما يكره أن يخلف في النار سبحان الله three kinds three things three صفات three conditions as he صلى الله عليه وسلم said there are three things listen to these three things brothers and sisters what are they whoever attains them these three magical things remember why it will come later there are three things Whoever attains them will find the sweetness of faith, the essence of faith. Halawatul iman. You will you will start to in.
enjoy living for Allah, you will start to come, you will love to come in the cold weather. You will love to wake up and come and pray in the masjid. You will fight the shaitan, shaitan to make it to the masjid. You will love to stay late till 11 in the masjid at night because you have to pray Salatul Isha and then you will make it back to the masjid at 4 to pray Salatul Fajr. You will start to enjoy it. Qiyamul Layl. You will feel uncomfortable the day, you, the night in which you mess. The day you do something less than what you may have been doing, you would be totally un, uh, un, un, unhappy. You may grieve, you will not be comfortable. This is what it is all about. So what is, what is this sweetness which we are talking about? What are you supposed to do? Where are these sweetnesses? Where are they? What they are? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said about them. When Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, they become more beloved to him than anyone else. We all claim, نُحِبُّ اللَّهِ وَنُحِبُّ رَسُولَ اللَّهِ وَلَكِنْ نَعْسِ اللَّهِ this is wrong. It should be if we love Allah and Rasulullah, then they are first and foremost. Nothing comes before them at all. When he loves the second one, when he loves a person and loves him only for the sake of Allah. You love a brother, you love him for the sake of Allah. A sister loves a sister, she loves him, her. For the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. No, Allah, it is not because he's white, not because she is black, not because he is black, not because he is rich, not because he is wealthy, not because he has his status, not because he is and he is and he is, but because for the sake of Allah, because he's a Muslim, because he's a practicing Muslim, because I love him, or how even they may not be so practicing, but they are my brothers and sisters, and maybe in future, in Mustaqbal, I would be able to do them, uh, do da'wah to them. Maybe they become good Muslims, maybe, you never know. He is my jar, my neighbor, she is my jirana, my uh, jara, my neighbor, you never know, maybe. I did something good to them or, or do and maybe they are thankful to Allah for that and Allah may accept it. Maybe they have made some dua from their heart for me. Yes, maybe I'm a cruel person. Maybe I'm not a perfect one, definitely not. But maybe I did something nice to someone and they made dua. Allahumma, Allahumma gfir li, Allahumma gfir li akhi fulan. Allahumma, ya Allah, forgive my fellow Muslim brother. He did this for me. And you and that person as we all have an angel responsible and they will say Amin, Ya Allah accept his dua and also give him the same. Don't you know? Maybe your brother, maybe your sister, maybe even your enemy who you consider to be the enemy, they made this dua for you. And then what happens after? It was accepted. And because of that dua, you make it to the Jannah. Wallahi, you will not find it in the sunya, but in hereafter you will be able to. So it's very important. Relationship with your brothers, relationship with your sisters, and that is part of what we will talk about, inshallah, not to, today, definitely. The third one. And he, sallallahu alayhi wa then he said, and when he would hate to return to kufr after Allah has saved him from it, and he would hate to be thrown into the fire. So three things, loving Allah and Rasulullah more than anything else. To love each fellow Muslim brothers and sisters for the sake of Allah. And to hate, to return back to kufr from which Allah has protected you, saved you, taken you out of, as you would hate to be thrown in the fire. Once you have this, you will start to get the sweetness of Iman. Wa jazakumullahu khairan. Once, as we know, this hadith is very famous. Uh, Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu he said to Rasulullah Ya Rasulullah you know Wallahi anta ahabu iliya min kullu shay min kullu shay illa nafsi you know Ya Rasulullah you are most beloved to me but from myself <coughs> you know what Umar he said but myself I was listening to a few lectures I recall in one of them one of the mashayik he said لأنه فكر وقدر ورأى أنه لا يمكن أن يحب المرء because he thought, Umar, he thought that it's impossible for a person to love anybody else more than himself. So that's why he said, Except myself. 
Then Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam told him, Ya Umar, you cannot attain the perfect iman unless you love Allah and Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Unless you love Rasulullah more than nafsa, akta hatta min nafsi ki Umar. Qala al an ya Rasulullah. Now, now I love you more than myself even. And that is what you all should be, brothers and sisters in Islam. Now, I will conclude it with the Maratib al muhabba the stages of <coughs> love. So that next month or the one after, when I complete this, you will be able to practice and see yourself where you are. And you will be surprised that we all are in the top. Now, the depth of the Arabic language is so much that when I, strug I struggled to find the translations of each stage, and most of the words were just similar. So I may have to explain a little bit. It starts with the word of alaqa, just a relationship, the first stage of love. Next one is alirada, determination, willpower. It goes a little bit further than relationship. Then it comes to as sababa, which is a little bit more stronger, a strong desire. This is all one stage to the next, to the next, as Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah, he has explained. Then the fourth one is al-Baram. Karam is also known in Urdu, which is a little bit stronger than the previous three, which is feeling of fondness, love, tenderness, and a little bit of fantasy comes in, known as al-Baram. al-Hubbul-Lazim. This is where the love starts to be with you, and this is one of the stages, or the final stages of the, of the likes of Surah uh, Jamil and Suniya and Antar and Abla and Qais wa Layla. The fifth stage is Al-Widad. Al-Widad. Wa huwa saf wal muhabba. It means intense feeling of caring <coughs> about someone or affection or fondness of a person or thing or great liking of something. Stage number six is Al-Shagaf. Well, remember wa shagafaha hubba? That when Yusuf والسلام, with that woman, Allah mentions it in Surah Yusuf, it is a total devotion, affection, and with fantasy. So it's a little bit further, and the scholars have explained it in one of the three. Unfortunately, I can't explain it right now due to the time. The seventh one is Al Ishq. Ishq is also something very much known, especially possibly to the uh, Malay and Urdu uh, and Persian, uh, or uh, originally those who had these three languages, Wallahu alam. Wahu al hubbul mufrid. Love which is deep and respect which is extremely high. Depends on whether you use it in the right way or the wrong. And here, uh, this is al ishq which, if a person happens to in the relationship between a human being with another creation of Allah, this just goes above the boundary level. And the eighth is At-Tatim, wa huwa at It is also one of the stages which is stronger than all the previous, where you end up almost up to the extent of worshipping, but less than that. Number nine is at and that is worshipping. That's number nine. And we all are Abdullah. We all are Abdullah, walhamdulillah. The last, which is only for two, and that is al khulla Friendship, love, and everything to the perfection and above. Qala sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, lo kuntu muttakhidhan min ahli al-ardi khalilan, lattakhazdu aba bakrin khalila, walakin sahibukum khalilu rahman. Hadith on sahih. If I was allowed to take somebody as my Khalil, as that special friend with that special stages, uh, status, I would have chosen that to be Abu Bakr. But it is not allowed. But your companion, that is Rasulullah is Khalil or Rahman, is the Khalil of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Some scholars, they say that Ibrahim was Khalilullah and Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa was Habibullah. That's wrong. Habib is a status lower than al khulla There are two who are Khalilullah, Ibrahim Khalilullah wa Muhammad ibn Abdullah Khalilullah alayhi wa salatu wa salam. As I said, these are the 10 stages. In the beginning, I said that we are on the top. Number nine, 
Number 10 is for nobody. It has been taken. There were two vacancies, and they are for Ibrahim and Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. So when we start this topic next time, you will know that you are above the average. You are sitting on the top, but the top has got the rajat. This is what we are going to talk about in the coming lesson. I pray to Allah that may Allah bless us all. Whatever we have had, we practice it. And Jazakumullah Khairan for sitting for so long. It's for more than one and a half hours. You have been sitting here. But remember, all of this is because you love Allah. Allah. So nothing is impossible when you love Allah. You are ready to do anything for Allah. Whatever you are required to do, you will do it for Allah. If you are called for whatever, for the sake of Allah, you will say, yes, ya Allah. Yes, remember that. Remember that, brothers and sisters, that we all love Allah. We want to love Allah. We have shortcomings. There are too many fitness and trials. We know it, but we know that Allah will make you strong. You have to only raise your hands and ask, Allah, Jazakumullah khairan, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana, wa fi l'akhirat hasana, wa kina adab al-nar, Allahumma inna zulumna anfusana, wa illam taqfil lana, wa tarhamna, lana kunanna min al-khasirin, Allahumma inna ala zikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatika, ya arhamur rahimin, Allahumma zukna shahada fi sabilika, ya arhamur rahimin, Allahumma natamanna al-shahada fi sabilik, إعلاء لكلمتك يا رحم الرحمن اللهم وفقنا فيها بالذي يرضيك عنا يا رب العالمين سبحان ربك رب العزة يما يصفون وسلام على المرسلين والحمد لله رب العالمين والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته